What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now it is early in the morning and winter has happened overnight so it's quite cold in here. My face still hasn't woken up yet and I'm still having my coffee. But today's project we're going to do some cutting boards and serving boards. So I want to do a edge grain cutting board. I have a couple of live edge little small planks that I want to turn into serving boards. A bit of maple that we might turn into a large kind of serving board. A few little ideas, a few little options that we look at, maybe some gift ideas. So without further ado, I'm going to have my coffee. Let's jump into it. Okay, so guys, this is going to be a relatively straightforward and simple build. So I have some walnut, I have some maple, I have some sapili here. I have a large kind of, uh, I think it's like 16 inches wide maple board up there. So that's going to make our large cutting board. I also have some of these spotted beaches. If you guys have been following the channel, you'll remember me preparing these. And I was wondering what to do with them. There are some live edge spotted beach uh, little planks. They're boards. They're not really big enough to do too much with. So we thought we might just turn these into little serving boards. So not much to do with these, just a little bit of shaving, but we'll do that later. The very first thing I want to do is prepare some stock. And I want to get this uh, edge green chopping board glued up. So that's the first thing. And when that's glued up, then we can work on all the other little boards because they're just roughly cutting them out and shaping. Not too much to do. So I want to make the cutting board out of walnut, maple and sapili. So we have a little bit of color inside in it. So let's get on and uh, let's get cutting some stock. Okay, so we're just going to get cutting the boards. Now a good size for a chopping board is roughly about 16 inches by 12 inches is not too bad, 300 by 400. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna cut it just a little bit longer. I'm gonna cut my pieces maybe 500 long, just so I have a little bit of waste, a little bit of spare on the end for when I'm running it through the planer in case I got any snipe or anything like that. So just gonna chop all the boards now at 500, which is just about 20 inches. Well, let's get on it and make some noise. So we have our boards cut to length. I have two uh, walnut ones. I want it to be a majority walnut. So with two of those, I have my maple and I have my sapili. Now you have a couple of options when it comes to making uh, cutting boards or chopping boards. You can do edge grain, which is what I'm going to do. So it's going to be edge grain faced up. So I'm going to cut these into strips and laminate it all together. So the edge grain shows up. You can do end grain. So you can cut them into loads of little sections, loads of little blocks and have the end grain turn up. Or you can do a face grain one. Now face grain ones look the best in my opinion, because obviously you're getting all that lovely grain pattern. But there's advantages and disadvantages to all of them. The best one for your knife is actually an end grain cutting board. So if you're making one for maybe a professional, or someone in your life who uh, loves to do some cooking and are always using their favorite knives and you want to make them a really nice uh, cutting board then go to the extra effort maybe of making an end grain one because it's a little bit more forgiving on the knife uh, the only thing about that is it can delaminate you can get some issues with it and it's very hard to get that uh, end grain into a lovely polished uh, finish just takes a little bit extra work. There's a lot more work in making an end grain cutting board So the next option is to use the soy grain keep that faced up a lot less work um, It's a little bit less forgiving on the knife and um, the knife doesn't cut into it as easy, but it's easier finish It's not too bad good thing about it is it's good and strong It won't delaminate because you're gluing face grain to face grain long grain to long grain and because you're keeping it edge on the board won't warp which is the problem with doing a face grain one that looks absolutely fantastic and looks the prettiest in my opinion but it's uh, less resistant to all those knife marks and the board can warp because you're using wide boards and you know yourself timber likes to move so we're going to use a side grain one so without further ado get all this through the plane our thickness so now i'm going to get these all down to the same thickness and then we're going to cut them with the strips on the bandsaw. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead, I'll do all that work on the planer thickness. Sorry, you guys don't need to watch me doing that because you've seen me doing it a hundred times if you've watched this channel. It's very simple. So I'm going to dimension all these down just down to the same thickness and then we can start cutting them into strips. Let's do that. All right, guys, our boards are dimensioned up. So I have two faces and one good edge. So I'm going to measure in from my good edge, 40 millimeters. So I want it to be uh, a relatively chunky uh, board. I think anything over an inch is good. An inch, an inch or 25 mil is a little bit too thin for a cutting board. So I want to make it kind of chunky. 40 mil is about good. Even up to two inches can be quite good. So um, I'm going to keep it 40 millimeters. So I'm just going to measure in 40 mil on all these 
take it to the bandsaw. I'm going to rough cut it because I don't want to uh, lose too much um, of the material. So the bandsaw blade is the best way to go. I could take out my um, track saw, but the blade is uh, about an eighth of an inch, I think, on that. So you'll be losing an eighth, an eighth of an inch with every cut. So the bandsaw blade is nice and thin. So cut all these now with the bandsaw, take them over to the jointer, put a straight edge back on them, take, cut the next one, put a straight edge back on it, cut the next one, and so on and so forth. So 40 millimeters thick, simple enough, let's do that. Okay guys, so here we are. We have all our pieces all milled up, all cut up, ready to go. So, just lots of uh, putting everything through the planar thickness or, and cutting on the bandsaw gets us to here. So what I'm gonna do is go walnut maple, walnut sapili, walnut maple, and so on and so forth. Now two of these uh, walnut pieces have flaws in them. Look, if you can see, it, they're split. You would never know from looking at either side that that flaw was actually in this piece of wood. So that's, those two cracks are, two pieces of the same uh, piece of walnut. You can see when you split them, you can see the big split running down them, so I have to keep them to the bottom. So that's interesting. If you were making this into a piece of furniture or something, uh, you would have a big flaw in your wood and you would never know unless you cut into it exactly where that flaw is. But it's only a cutting board. It's not gonna uh, affect my cutting board too much and they're gonna keep them to kind of the middle of the cutting board so everything is nice and compressed and glued together and we can fill it from the bottom anyway. We'll keep everything to the bottom. So that's it. So now it's just a case of get this glued up and uh, leave this set for a good few hours and we can get on then with making our other pieces. So that's what it's going to look like. Okay, we're all ready for the glue up. So now that I've arranged the grain exactly where I want it and my, all my face is facing in the right direction, so I'm happy with my layout. Just gonna get some glue. I'm gonna use some Type On 3 for this because this is a waterproof glue. I think Type On 2 will actually do as well. But just make sure you're using a waterproof glue because obviously this will be getting washed down and wiped down as it will be a cutting board. So there's not much to this now. Let's just get all these pieces glued up. Okay guys, there we go, that's all clamped up, so there's not much more we can do with that now, just leave it set, leave it for a good few hours, we'll get on with the other stuff now, and uh, when we have all that done, this should be ready to finish. Okay, so next up I have some of these spotted beach boards that I cut, they still have the live edges on them, so I'm going to keep the live edges on them, and we're just going to put a little shape to either end. I'll just have to clean off some of this bark and loose material, get all that off, but there's not much to these, they're going to be a nice little uh, small maybe cheese board or a little serving board that you can put down on a table if you're doing kind of, you know, a few little handy little uh, finger food things you can leave on top of this just as a nice little display. So not much to do with this, like I said, we'll just get the sides cleaned up and uh, we'll cut a nice shape into the end of each side. Maybe we might drill a little hole that you can put a little lanyard in or just for hanging them up. So let's get on that. complete change of plan with this one. I didn't like the straight edges on the board, so I put curved edges on them all, and I thought, 
you know, I said these can go as a set, so whoever I give these to, they will be given as a set, and um, I thought maybe just make them interlocking. So I have two kind of boards with holes in them, they can be used as individual boards. Now they're not finished yet, they're just roughly cut the shape, drill some holes in them, took them to the other table, put a slight round over on, and these will fit together either side like that. And then we have this board, which can be used again either side of the main board. Now I missed a little bit of a trick. I could have made these so that they all interlock every which way. So no matter what board you use, what side they will interlock. They won't. Both of these ones work with the main one, which is this one. So that's just a little thing. Now I want to take this and I want to route in some square sections into this. This is going to be for the utensils and maybe crackers. You can line up your crackers in it or your cheese or whatever. And then these will be your main two uh, serving boards or chopping boards for your cheese boards. So yeah, that's it. I want to go together just like that. So it's a nice little display or little design. It can be used individually or together. So now what I'll do is just route this. Um, I'm going to route our shapes into this, our squares. And then it's a case to get this all sanded up. So nice and simple. Right guys, that's that routed out. So nice big rectangle in the middle of the board. This will be our utensil or you can put a block of cheese in there or your, your crackers can all sit in this. Things like that, little bread pieces or whatever you want to hold can sit in that one. And the rest then, that can be like a meat board and a cheese board or fruit or whatever way you want to set it up, whatever you're doing with your cheese board, you can do whatever you like. Now, we're going to leave the sanding to last. We're going to sand all the boards together because we have to do something a little bit different or a little bit extra with the sanding to make sure that the boards come out right. So we leave that to the last, so we'll set them aside now and we'll finish all the boards together. Now, we're on to the third and final board, so let's have a look at that. Right guys, this is going to be our third and final board. I have a nice big white piece of maple. Now, if you remember in a previous video, I showed you these boards. Um, these are the water damaged maple boards that I got a good deal on. So because they're water damaged, there's plenty of spalting in them and we want to kind of keep that. This one is splitting and checking here. So we kind of want to work around that and keep as much of this board because it's a lovely pattern that's in it. And uh, we're going to try and do something with this. So let's see what we can work out. Okay, so here's our spalted board. And you can see this is all splitting and checking in here. There was kind of all knots and crazy grain taking place. And we have a big check that runs up along here. But I don't want to lose any of this lovely spalted pattern. So we want to try and keep this material. So it might not come out on camera now, but I've kind of drawn around here a kind of an odd shaped handle for this that we can try and run along the side of this crack, try and incorporate this. Then maybe we can drill this out uh, and lose some of that checking and hopefully the board doesn't split. Now we can make a nice board. Now we can take another handle maybe in this way and kind of make an odd shaped one uh, out this way. That's kind of the plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop this board and I'm going to try and get it to the bandsaw and see if I can get a cut in here somehow. That's the plan. It might not be possible, but we'll see what we can do. I might have to do it with a jigsaw maybe. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to cut this on the bandsaw, so it's jigsaw time. So let's get it done. we go it's uh, cut out with a jigsaw now we're just going to make this nice to hold in hand and i got to flatten all this down so this is going to be fairly easy to do um, round the edges shape it all i'm going to take a hand plane to this now and just do it by hand again this doesn't have to be perfect i'm looking for a perfectly thickness board just want a nice flat top nice flat sides we get all these little curves cut into it and we'll finish this board all by hand so let's do it we go guys nice and quick on that one not too much work and um, just hit it with the hand plane both sides on the edges 
and I've just drawn in little curves now. I just kind of freehanded them because it's going to be a kind of a freehand design. So I'm going to bandsaw them off, take them to the spindle sand, get this all sanded down, and then we uh, shall uh, hit it with a round over bit. So let's do that. Another one just about done. So we hit it with a half inch round or a bit all the way around and uh, just around off those edges. It's nice and smooth and to the, um, soft to the touch, which is what you want. And it's easy enough to hold. It's a nice big, heavy kind of breadboard, chopping board. You could even use this as a cheese board to put all your stuff on if you wanted. So we managed to maintain most of the sporting up to the handle, which is nice. Now, like the rest of them, this needs a serious amount of sanding. So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And uh, yeah, we'll come back to that one. Now, I've just taken this out of the clamps. So our butcher block type uh, board is ready with all the laminates. Now we need to get this nice and flat. So I've got a lot of hand planing to do. So I'm gonna get on and do that. When that's done, we'll get this all squared up, hit it with a round over bit, and then it's gonna be sanding like crazy. Let's get on it. It's getting quite hot in here now. So we started out freezing this morning and now it is very warm. So I'll just have my number four and a half smoother. This is my Stanley uh, Sweetheart. It's about 100, 100 years old, I think. But it's a good sharp blade in it. So I'm going across all the boards. I'm not going with the boards because I have grain rising in different directions with all the individual pieces. So the safest bit is just to take, just to pat across them all at an angle. Um, just nice and easy with the smoother. We don't want to tear anything out now. So I'm just at it roughly, I don't know, maybe an 80 degree angle and heading across the board, across all the pieces. Just taking a light skim off because it is pretty flat. I glued it pretty fat. So I'll get on with this. I'll do both sides. When that's done, I'm going to hit square it all up, hit it with a round over bit, and then we're going to get finished. So I'll get on and do that. You guys don't need to see me do that, it's pretty simple. And uh, when we're back sanding, that's when we'll jump back in. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay guys, so I got a bit of tear out on the router table. You can see right here, now it's the bottom of the board, so it's not a complete disaster, but still we can't have that. So. The only thing I can try and do now to prepare something like this is to try and fill it with a few bits of um, sawdust and chippings. So I'm gonna try and get some wood glue down into that. And then what we're gonna do is try and build this out. With some walnut sawdust and chippings. Again, I'm just gonna keep packing that in there. I want to build it out so that I can sand it flush and hopefully it won't be seen or at least not noticed. Get a bit more glue on that. Doesn't look pretty now, but when we come to sanding and finishing the subfuge, as they say, will help hide it. It's never going to be perfect, but uh, it will be hidden. So there we go. Let that like that now. That's kind of built that out. Let that go off for about an hour, and then we can sand it down. So let's go. Right, so while the glue is drying on our repair, I'm going to get on with the sanding. Now, I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do here rather than showing you what I'm going to do here, and then I'm going to get on with it. So I'm going to sand everything to 120 grit. Then I'm going to take a relatively wet cloth and wet everything down front and back, make sure I get all the parts of the wood. Leave it dry out, that'll pop the grain up, raise the grain, and then we're going to sand to our finished grit. If we don't do that, if we sand, take it up, put the finish on it, and then as soon as someone goes to use it and they go to wipe it down with a cloth, all the grain is going to pop up. And like I said, it's going to be like a frizzy hairdo or a hedgehog. And then when they feel it the next time, it's going to be super rough and they're going to be wondering why the hell has that happened. So 
That's the crack. I'm going to get on with it now. I'm going to get all this sanded up. I'm going to weight it down. I'm going to sand it up. I'm going to do the same with the board. And when it's time to put the finish on, I'll get back to you guys. Because I'm afraid this video is getting a bit long. I'm about eight hours now in the workshop. So uh, I'll try and keep the edit as short and as sweet as possible. So I crack on. Enough talking. Let's get sanding. Man, do I hate sanding. Well, everything's sanded up now to 120 grit. So now, this is the part I was telling you about. Just get some water. Throw some on a wet towel. Let's get it damp. And we just want to wet this board up. That's going to cause all the grain to pop up. You can already feel it now starting to pop. It was lovely and smooth, and now it's kind of feeling kind of hairy. So that's what's going to happen. So let's get water in it all over. As soon as it returns to its original non-wet colour, then you know you can start sanding again. Nice and easy. Okay guys, everything is sanded to 320 grit. Thank God, at last, I hate sanding, uh, but it's done now. And like I say, just a little bit of water, pop the green, knock it back so that doesn't uh, pop out first time these get, a, these get a wipe down. Um, it'll be a little bit of a surprise to someone when you give them to them, if that happens. So we're gonna use some chestnut food safe finish to treat all these now. And um, this is just a clear oil. It doesn't color the wood like Danish oil. Um, so it's gonna be a natural oil finish. And then just to keep the life in these, you can treat them with beeswax every now and again, every couple of months. Just give them a nice rub down with some beeswax. That's food safe and uh, it helps protect the wood and keep these things going for years to come. So let's get this on. I'll get you in for a closer look because it's nice to see the oil go on these uh, butcher's blocks. Okay, let's get some oil on this. And let's see the results of our hard day's work. And I think that was well worth it. That is pretty nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that guys, what do you think? Okay, next up our nice breadboard. So let's get some oil on this guy and see how it interacts with all the spalting that's in this piece. Yeah, that's a pretty cool effect. It'd be nice if the spalting was the whole way across the board, but they say beggars can't be choosers, and I got this piece of timber very, very cheap. But uh, yeah, that's a lovely effect. Let's get some on the other side. This side actually I think is going to be the top. I think this is the nicest side. Up around the handle looks particularly good, I do say so myself. Oh, look at that. Not too bad, pretty nice breadboard. And last but not least, our spotted beach pieces. It's amazing the way the oil just gives you that little bit of color, really helps them pop. And they are pretty nice. Just a little idea I said I'd try out. Just something different. Kind of a set of three now that would all go together. Might be nice on a table at a party or something. If you're having friends around. You want to get your fancy cheese out, a couple of nice whiskey bottles, a couple of nice whiskey glasses maybe. Very posh. And it was a long way from posh that I grew up, believe you me. <laughs> 
Okay guys, now that we have a couple of coats to finish on, I'm just gonna put some feet on the butcher's block. Now, I will be replacing these. I have some rubber feet that you can screw on ordered. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna use these. These will get me out of a hole, as they say. And that will denote that this is the bottom and the other side is the top. I really need to get some sort of branding iron as well or something that I can put my mark on. So if any of you guys know of a, a good place to order or to get or how to make your own branding symbol, be sure and let me know in the comments. So that's just four little feet for the butcher's blocks. Help it stop sliding around. Again, like I said, I will be replacing them with little rubber ones that, that you screw on just so it keeps it up off a wet countertop and uh, it gives it a bit of grip too. So there we go. Okay guys, there we go. Another long day in the office complete and we ended up with some nice little projects. So hopefully you've enjoyed that and hopefully it gives you some inspiration, gives you some ideas. And uh, these would make some lovely gifts um, for people if you have that kind of thing in mind. Again, the cheese board and kind of little meat board, the three pieces interlocking, so it's part of the set now. Looks quite good, quite happy where it turned out. So you have a little recessed area, hold a few crackers, cheese, whatever. The utensils can fit in there and they don't fall all over the place. Then you have like a board for your cheese and maybe a board for your cold meat or some fruit or that kind of thing, whatever you're into yourself. Then the maple uh, bread board, quite nice. I really like the marbled head, how that turned out. I'm really happy with it. Again, this is a piece of salvaged, um, more or less water damaged maple and it's been put to good use now. I get a few more of them out of that board and that would look lovely hanging up in the kitchen on the wall, I think. And finally then, the butcher's block, chopping block, cutting block, whatever way you want to describe it. Really happy with how this turned out. I like the stripe pattern between the sapili, the walnut and the maple. Again, the sky is the, sky is the limit on what you can do with these things. You can do end grain, side grain, face grain, multiple different patterns, whatever your imagination lets you do, you can do it. Again, uh, end grain is the best for not dulling a knife, soy grain, second best, and then flat grain looks fantastic, but it's kind of hard on the knives and it's hard to keep a, a nice surface on it. So I think the side grain boards are a good compromise between the two because they're really, really strong. The laminations uh, helps keep everything flat, square, through the whole lot. And uh, yeah, it turned out really, really nice. Now you could route in like a sioux slot all the way around it, I believe they call it. It's like a little uh, juice little gutter that runs all the way around. See guys do that, there's no problem there. You can put any edge, you can put a chamfer on it, you don't have to do a round over edge. Like I said, the sky's the limit with these things and they look fantastic when they're all oiled up. No matter what way you do it, when you put a bunch of hardwoods together, throw some oil on them, they look the part and that would make a lovely gift for anybody would be delighted with that, I reckon. So there we go guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that, hopefully it gives you some ideas. Again, thumbs up if you've liked it, that really helps me out a lot. Share the video, comments, questions below, anything you want to add anything you, you uh, things you saw that you would do just let me know in the comments anything that you would change any ideas that you have just stick them below in the comments and again if you're new here think about hitting the sub button and uh, yeah that's it i'm going to get out of here now guys that was a long long day now i have a few hours of editing ahead of me so i'm definitely going to have a whiskey now so i'll see you in the next one guys take it easy